I'm Andrew Bennett. I am the Education Officer for the Friends of the Lisbeck. It's a role that I have been in for the past seven years. Um, I think that the Friends of Lisbeck has always been involved in education and advocacy and various forms of learning. I think that's inherent to the organization. Um, but they haven't necessarily been um, positions in, in the organizations that have been dedicated to education. I think over the years, various people on the executive committee have been involved in various projects to do with education. Um, but when I came on board, there was quite a specific intent to drive education through the Friends of Lisbeck and particularly as a way of engaging the communities and particularly the businesses along the river. So it started for me coming in in 2016 with a, quite a specific mandate to create engagement and learning in the communities and, and the, the businesses along the Lisbeck. I think there was, it was always an idea that um, we needed to market ourselves more to, to businesses along the river, to get them to, to know more about what we were doing, the reasons why we were doing it, and ultimately looking where, at where we could get support from those businesses, both financially and, and other, other resources. So it began, my journey with Friends of Lisbeck began uh, in 2016, and for the first two years I focused specifically on setting up various networking events and engagement activities, bringing businesses along the river, local residents, um, some government officials as well, um, and also partnering with the other community-based organizations along the river. And I think Friends of Lisbeck is um, quite often, well, more in recent times, but it has been seen as an umbrella body for the whole range of organizations that operate in various ways along the river. So obviously our focus is mainly environmental, but there are a lot of social impact groups that are operating along the river as well. They're communities of homeless people, and there's often conflict between the residents, um, people living close to the river, and also the businesses uh, with, with those homeless people who, who essentially run their lives on, on the riverbank. Um, so there's been, there's been an opportunity that Friends of Lisbeck has always had to be the focal point for a variety of organizations and interest groups to come together around what it means to um, live in a city with an urban river, and particularly Lisbe the Lisbeck River, uh, which is, has such a long history. Um, and, you know, in terms of how we try to frame ourselves, the, it's not just about clearing pollution in a river. It's about sharing awareness and understanding that this river in many, in many senses is the, the key to mitigating the whole city against climate change. The emphasis on, on green corridors and blue corridors, I think we've all long known about concepts like, like the um, urban heat island effect, that cities create spaces of huge warming. And the more vegetation you have, and particularly water in a city, does exactly the opposite and cools, cools the city down. And when you're facing climate change and increasing flooding, and, and potential for droughts, that becomes so important in your, in your management of the city. So as a result of the engagement that's, that I've been involved with, with businesses particularly along the Lisbeck in the last five years, the various relationships which have, um, have remained. Um, as you can imagine, when you, when you engage with with people, particularly businesses, sometimes there's a touch point, sometimes you manage to do um, a corporate social responsibility day, 
Uh, we did quite a few of those. A lot of businesses linked it to Mandela Day. That was quite popular. And one of the businesses that, uh, or the organizations along the river that we have just ma maintained a relationship with has been, been Omni HR Consulting, based at the River Park office complex in Mowbray. And during our initial engage engagements three or four years ago, they actually volunteered to get involved. And they said, literally, how can we help? We've seen your team on the river. We've often wondered who these guys are. And they attended, that was Omni attended one of the, the networking events. And uh, their pledge at the time was, what can we do to help? And we started discussions and we said, well, what do you do? You know, what is, uh, what's your core business and how can, we, how can we find synergies around that? So quite quickly that emanated or that evolved into a, a learnership program for the Lisbeck maintenance team. So the Lisbeck maintenance team is our team of usually six, seven or eight um, young people that are employed full time on the river. And we've had our current team with us um, for quite some time. And the idea has always been that, that the Lisbeck Maintenance Project team is a stepping stone for, for people to gain experience in urban river management and then to move on and to take that experience into, into other spheres. Um, Omni gave us an opportunity as part of their corporate social responsibility program to put our team on a learnership. And we did that in the end of 2017. So that was a national certificate in environmental practices which the entire Lisbeck Maintenance Project team achieved. And that relationship with Omni didn't just stay there. It was always bubbling under the surface. And although we went through the COVID years, um, so AVAX has been a loyal funder to the Friends of Lisbeck, I think going back more than 10 years. And over the last couple of years, they've approached Friends of Lisbeck to ask about exploring different ways of funding the organization. And that's where the conversation around skills development started. Uh, looking at opportunities and how ABAX can provide a portion of their skills development funding, which enables them to increase their BE scorecard and gain more points towards their BE scorecard. And the way it typically works is to, is to create work opportunities for previously disadvantaged youth. So in this case, we're talking about youth between being young people between the ages of 18 and usually 34, but depending on the relevant BE scorecard, it could be 18 to 26. So we really are talking about young people who are starting their careers, they've, they've finished school, they're looking for, for opportunities um, and areas where, where they're perhaps they're interested in or areas that they, they don't know that they're interested in and there, there is potential to uh, develop a career path. So with a healthy partnership between ABEX Foundation and Friends of Lisbeck already in place and, and a lot of links toward, to Omni HR Consulting, the three organizations got talking and it was actually quite easy to facilitate that because there was history and there were similar goals and I think the value systems were quite closely aligned. It wasn't just about um, BE points. For ABAX Foundation, we, for a long time we've known that they're, they're interested in the, the work that's being done on the river. But there's also that social component um, where you can't do the work on the river without people. And as part of the Friends of Lisbeck's goals and objectives, it's always been about raising awareness around the river, why it's important, but at the same time, making the river that social space where people can come and enjoy the amenity value, the coolness of the river, the space to run, to walk, um, and through that start to interact with the river and reconnect with what a river really is. And of course, as I think most of us know, the Lisbeck River, because it's been canalized, because it hasn't been valued, because it's been treated 
mostly as a, as a, a sewer and a, a stormwater drain, a glorified stormwater drain. The public has, has assumed that, that understanding as well, and they don't value the river as, 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 as they should, perhaps. So with ABEX, um, ABEX Foundation, Omni HR Consulting and Friends of Lisbeck coming together, we created an opportunity for a one-year work-based learnership with Omni being the service provider who could, uh, the accredited service provider that would provide the, the learnership, the training for the learners. ABEX Foundation being the funder and the, the beneficiary of the skills development points and Friends of Lisbeck being, being the host organization and the beneficiary of the learners. So we started with, with six interns that were recruited and the recruitment was done by the Friends of Lisbeck through our river manager Sabella. We had an interview process so it was quite a, quite a formal process, structured process to make sure we found youth that, that were committed or would be committed to to the project and it, unsurprisingly it wasn't difficult to find people who were interested. Um, I don't think they really knew what they were getting themselves into um, but the important things were that they were, they were committed and there was a, a fledgling interest in environmental work and I think that's one of the things that has been really exciting about the project is that there are not too many spaces where young people can come and learn about an urban river. It's not something that you, you typically get exposed to in most tertiary courses um, of study. Most of them are fairly theoretical. Um, the value that I think that this learnership brings is that young people get to experience on a daily basis what it's like to work along the river, to understand the ecology of the river, why it's important, and more specifically how that interacts with the dynamics of an urban setting. People, um, infrastructure, that's, you know, that's critical in terms of understanding how we link the development of a modern concrete city with the natural elements of a river and of the the riparian areas on the on the side of the river and these six young people were exposed to that they've been exposed to that um, over the course of eight months working daily with the Lisbeck maintenance team yeah you have an established team that was used to pretty much just working on their own they had their own dynamics so even for them it was a fantastic opportunity to see how they responded to bringing in new recruits into their team, into their space. And we weren't surprised because we, we, uh, we knew that we had a strong team that had hidden talents. And someone like Zaza was able to use her, her motherly nurturing skills and take these young people on who'd come onto the team and really nurture them and work with them because it's not easy it's coming into that environment it's actually quite hard labor it's tough out there um, working in the elements we typically don't work when it's in, it's uh, pouring with rain or it's the, the weather's particularly bad but at the same time um, it's hard work planting and removing alien vegetation and, and species so practically they spend most of their time on the river. The learners, that was their experience, their, their primary experience of the program. It was an intensive work-based experience. Added to that was around two to three days in the classroom at Omni HR Consultancy. But luckily, sitting in a classroom still overlooking the Lisbeck River. And they could obviously then relate their experiences of working on the river to the theory of the National Certificate in Environmental Practices. The program came to an end at the end of August this year and 
there was the opportunity to look at what happens next and how do we continue to support the program, to invest in the program, and particularly the potential to take these youth on in the Friends of Lisbeck. So one of the part, some of the some of the main objectives of this skills development program have been to build capacity in the Lisbeck maintenance team. And that's what I've mentioned in terms of the existing team members getting an opportunity to take on different roles, to develop their own leadership skills, to nurture young people into their workspace. That was one one key objective of, of the learnership program. Other objectives included building succession, uh, making sure that we could also in time start to expand the team. So for years as an executive committee, the Friends of Lisbeck, we've been talking about how do we get more hands on deck? How do we get more people onto the river to increase the amount of work that we're able to do? At the moment, it's quite tricky. We've got nine kilometers of river that a team of six or seven have got to have got a service. And that, in, that means piling into the bucky and driving up and down and dropping them off in different, different sections. So there's actually a limit that, that can be achieved. And it's remarkable how much that small team does achieve in the space of one year with the small budget that, that we work on. So for a long time, there's been discussion around how we increase the, the size of the team. And the thinking has almost been to be able to split the team into two two groups of four or five and having one working in the northern section of the river or the upper reaches and the other down in the lower reaches. And for the first time, we've been able to start looking at that as a possibility. The interns coming in, for for the first time, we've been able to almost double our numbers of the team. Um, But we want to do that beyond just eight months and, and one year. We want to see how we can build that into a program that continues year after year. So there's continuity. So with with the learnership coming to an end, there was a real prospect that that would be it and there wouldn't be continuity. And as an executive committee, the Friends of Lisbeck, we started to think about how we could retain some of the youth, particularly the ones that, that excelled and showed a real interest and enthusiasm for for the river work. And in discussions with ABAX Foundation and Omni, we looked at potential for doing a second learnership, but there were there were certain limitations and restrictions on that. And particularly in that skills development funding doesn't necessarily allow for ongoing learnerships. Uh, or, or funding of the same the same group of people, uh, it tends to to prefer to bring in new groups, um, new individuals, and we were very fortunate that there was an opportunity that came about through Gold Youth Development Agency. Now, Gold Youth is a, is an established youth development agency that was established right here in in Cape Town. In fact, Rondebosch. Um, literally on the banks of the Lisbeck River um, in 2004. And Gold Youth has recently become an implementing partner for the YES program. The YES program is the Youth Employment Service. It's a non-profit organization that looks to link up corporates who have skills development funding available with organizations that can recruit and place youth in job opportunities. And when I say job opportunities, I'm, I'm really talking about one year of work experience. But that is so valuable for, for our youth, particularly today, where it's incredibly difficult to get a job. Young people looking for a job need experience. And they are looking for opportunities where they can get that experience. So in a, through a partnership with Gold Youth and with the Friends of Lisbeck, we were able to take three of the learners who were on the Omni AVAX Foundation program and offer them an additional year of employment with the Friends of Lisbeck. And that is, that is essential, 
I think, for, for the program because eight months is really not enough. It's really just getting a taste of the work on the river and what's possible. By giving these three youth the opportunity and extension of another year, it serves a whole set of new interests. It gives Friends of Lisbeck another opportunity to expand the team. It gives our maintenance team further opportunity to build on their, their leadership skills and to, to, to nurture the youth and, and give them more, more experience on the river. And then it also gives um, Gold Youth an opportunity to get involved in the environmental space. Gold Youth is, is primarily focused on social development, um, but with a very with a broader focus around sustainability, including entrepreneurship and environmental sustainability, looking at food security, water security, and energy security. So the water space is a is a really critical space. And it's a lot of people will argue why are we investing so much time and energy on in a river in a predominantly affluent part of Cape Town. And what I think all of us at the Friends of Lisbeck would say is if we can't get it right on the Lisbeck, we're not going to get it right anywhere else. And already we've seen that what the work that's been done on the Lisbeck being used as a blueprint, as a model for other community groups on other rivers in Cape Town. And there's a huge amount of interest in the work that we've done, that, that we've done over the past well, 30 years. So my, my main responsibility with the Friends of Lisbeck as a volunteer executive committee member has been to look at learning and development and particularly how we bring more young people into the space. My background is not ecological. It's broadly environmental and it's education. And I've always wondered how, what I can bring to the organization with my skill set, with my experience and the opportunity to bring young people into this river space has always excited me. And I've worked with uh, students at the University of Cape Town. And that's, that's exciting because you, we, we've had architecture students come onto the river and do various projects through Dr. Kevin Winter, who has a long-standing relationship and been able to connect the Friends of Lesbic with the Environmental and Geographical Sciences Department and now Future Water at UCT. There's been a long history of UCT students coming and doing work along the river. But the opportunity is, is to how to expose this river work to people who are not in a privileged position, that come from other areas of Cape Town, where there are other rivers in, let's face it, in, in a much more dire state of pollution, um, just communities who are not even at a point where looking after a river is important. They're just trying to survive. And there are enormous lessons to be learnt along the Lisbeck. And the opportunity to bring people from across Cape Town, all walks of life, other communities, into this Lisbeck space and to create a program where they, they're able to learn through practice. And that's practically, what does it mean to look after a river? What does it mean to engage with the residents and to work with local government? Bringing all these role players and stakeholders together to find solutions uh, that work in maintaining an urban river. That's exciting. Um, and how do we create a learning space a continuous learning space. And I think what, what many people don't know is that our river managers, it's not just the river team, it's the managers who've led that river team over the last 10 to 15 years. Those gentlemen and one lady have cut their teeth in what, it, what urban water management is all about. And many of those managers have gone on to bigger and better things, taken on high profile positions in government. And in some cases, we've even lost them to, to other countries like Australia. But where do we start? How do we get grassroots youth involved? Those that are not necessarily privileged enough to, to go to a tertiary institution and get a, a, 
an undergraduate course under their belts. How do we get those youth excited about learning about an urban river and why it's important to us? So I think the, the learnership serves three main objectives, advocacy, education, and increasing the capacity of the LISPIC maintenance project team. So if I can just talk through those briefly. Education has always been at the heart of Friends of Lisbeck. I think all of us in the organization, we're constantly striving to learn more about the river. We are understanding new and different things every day. So there's a, a constant desire to learn. But how do you create a learning environment? How do you create it with enough structure to make sense? with enough structure to actually provide organized learning. Um, I think that the learnership starts to do that. My hope is that in time, we will have some form of academy on the river, that there would be a, a structured learning program that a variety of role players are, are involved with. So many, many people refer to the Lisbeck as a living laboratory. There's so much to learn just by engaging with the river, both ecologically and socially. If one looks at the development that is constant along the river, we can't stop that. But we can have a huge influence on how it's done. And we already have started in the last 10 years at least, we've started to see people opening up onto the river instead of building and closing off against the river because it was a security risk, because it was dirty, it was, it was an eyesore, is now with the clearing of, of the riverbanks and creating a, of, a, of a beautiful space and having a variety of community groups involved in that, everyone adding their little bit, the river is beginning to open up. In terms of adv advocacy, Many people have said, we've seen you on the river, but we don't know what you're doing. We don't even know who you are. And they've been surprised to, to learn that it's a community-based organization. There's a natural assumption that people working on a river belong to government. And that is, that is what it, it perhaps should be. But for various reasons, our local government just doesn't have the capacity to do the kind of work that, that is necessary on the river. They certainly do their bit. But what we at the Friends of Lisbeck have been able to do through the maintenance team and through the learnership is to take that to another, another level. When the public gets to see people working on the river, they get interested. There's a curiosity that gets piqued. And people start to ask questions. They, many people say, well, how can we get involved? How can we support? That's the beginning of an increased awareness and understanding of why an urban river is important. Just starting to ask those questions and people coming down to the river to see what's happening and then getting involved. And I think that's where one of, one of the, the goals of the learnership is to make sure that we're as visible as we can possibly be on the river. That constant visibility is important for education and awareness. So we're incredibly grateful to ABEX Foundation and Omni for making this partnership possible. And we've been amazed at the commitment of the interns and how excited they've been just during the short, short period that they've been on the learnership and just to see their, their commitment to keep going, having been given another opportunity, an opportunity to extend their learning experience by another year with the Friends of Lisbeck. And beyond that, our hope is that they will stay in the organization, that we will be able to find the resources to keep them within the organization. Now, that's more, more of a challenge. That requires additional funding. And we need to keep looking at all the ways, all the mechanisms to leverage funding. And we, we're grateful to ABAX Foundation, and we want to make an appeal to all businesses along the river. Everybody who has experienced the river in its different forms, who's able to recognize 
the value that it brings to this city and the incredible history. And that's, that's something special. It means that people recognize what, what they've got. We can't do that without help and support. And I think that a skills development program and making funding available for skills development is one unique way to address a whole variety of challenges that we have, both social and environmental, to give opportunities for young people to come and experience what it means to work and maintain and develop an urban river, and at the same time, gain practical experience and develop a career path in environmental practices for themselves and for the benefit of our city and our country.